Hey yo, what is up guys? Welcome back into another YouTube video. I hope you guys are having a great week, weekend, whenever the heck you guys are freaking watching this. Let's dive in, okay? So I made a post on Instagram the other day. I don't know if you guys can see that, but essentially the title is why clients don't want to work with your assistant coach. And I have four reasons why, okay? So this video is for you. If you have assistant coaches, or even if you plan on having assistant coaches and running that model, right? There is a hard trade transition for when people are expecting to work with you to now you're playing the CEO and you want people to start working with your assistant coaches. It is an extremely hard transition. And one of the simple answers is patience and persistence, but there's really four main reasons why people aren't actually doing it. So let's freaking dive in once again. Actually, I'm going to make you guys comment something before I dive in. Where are you watching from? Go into the comment section down below right now. Let me know where you're watching from. If you guys didn't know this already, I am creating from Austin, Texas. But go into the comment section. I want to know where the heck are you watching from, okay? So let's dive in. Why clients don't want to work with your assistant coach. Reason number one, and I love this one. This, this one is powerful. Number one, your company's marketing is still all about you. No one knows your assistant coaches and they're expecting you. So on your Instagram, Facebook, wherever you're posting your fitness content, you haven't done shit to share about your assistant coaches yet if this is your problem, right? You've just been continuing to post about you. So therefore, people should be expecting to work with you, right? If you're only posting about you. One of the best ways to solve this is to reshare reshare your assistant coach's posts, right? In addition to that, share about your assistant coach's client's successes. In addition to that, you can go live, do a shared screen live with your assistant, assistant coach once a week and you guys can cover topics, right? There's just endless things that you can do, but really what you want to do is you want to get your assistant coaches on your page and then you want to remove yourself slowly and really hype up your assistant coaches, right? You want to be a hype man or woman for your assistant coaches and constantly repost their stuff so that your audience gets accustomed to seeing your assistant coaches. So when they go through the sales process, they're like, oh, I'm not expecting to work with so-and-so. I'm expecting to work with their assistant coach. Or maybe they're actually even more excited to work about their work with your assistant coaches because you've hyped them up so well and so much. All right. Number two, your sales process fails to educate your, your prospects on the potential that they may not be working with an assistant coach. So really to sum that one up, up, up it's a clear communication, right? Whenever a lead comes in, you want to clearly communicate to them at the appropriate time in your sales process that, you know, they, they have a high likelihood that they may get paired with an assistant coach based on, you know, their personality, their goals, their challenges, their needs, a whole slew of things. You know, you really want to communicate probably in the initial call that, you know, the purpose of this call is really to figure out what assistant coach on staff is going to best fit their needs. And, you know, maybe even in your application process, I would have a question that signifies them, you know, uh, saying it's okay to work with an assistant coach, right? We actually have a question on our type form that says, I being the prospect, I fully understand and am okay with working with one of Chad's amazing assistant coaches on staff. Yes or no, right? So they're already buying in prior to even getting on the call. But basically to sum up point number two is you have to have clear communication early and often in your sales process that they're not going to be working with you and they're going to be paired with an assistant coach. Okay. Number three, you make yourself easily affordable instead of increasing your prices and making your assistant coaches the affordable option. One of the easiest ways to sell to your assistant coaches and stop selling to you is doing a price, a, a massive price increase on yourself, right? So then people are like, I only want to work with you. And you're pitching the prices and you're like, okay, cool. Well, hey, it's this much to work with me. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm going to work with your assistant coach. So have a big discrepancy between your prices and the assistant coach's prices, because then if they do choose to want to work with you, it's a win for you, right? Because you just got some astronomical amount of money for them because they literally just wanted to work with you versus, you know, having a price drop to work with an assistant coach, which most people are going to be like, Oh, I'll just take that because it's the more affordable option. So you want to create a money gap between working with you and working with them so that when you're pitching the prices, it's a no brainer to work with your assistant coach. Okay. That's probably one of the fastest ways to uh, make this work. Okay. And the last one is a mindset perspective. 
you haven't changed your mindset yet from coach to CEO. And this is a big struggle for most coaches because they always, 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 always want to be the coach, but they also want to grow their business. Well, guess what? It's going to be very hard for you to grow your business if you're the one who's handling all the clients or hasn't at least changed in your marketing that you are going to be handling less clients, right? So you have to switch your mindset from, hey, if I want to make the greatest impact and income in the world, it's going to be me removing my myself being on un, being unselfish right and, and removing myself and i don't i'm not going to be you know the the life changer here and i'm going to put other people in positions of power where they're going to change people's lives right it's you empowering your assistant coaches to change more lives because you as one single person can only change x amount of lives on your roster but you as a ceo can change endless lives because you can always hire more and more assistant coaches to fill their rosters and help more and more and more people endless amounts of people and then guess what you could still be a coach because you get to coach your assistant coaches on how to be uh, more amazing coaches so you're a coach's coach uh, at that point and you're managing people but guys those are the four reasons why most people are having a hard time transferring their clients from themselves to working with their assistant coaches let me know if you guys found this helpful comment down below and let me know if you did thumbs up comment subscribe you know the deal i'll talk to you guys soon peace out